Spiral review for Spiral 11. Uh, we're going to start off with some trig models. We're working with a model that's about an accordion, and the length of an accordion is going to vary in time. We're asked to write this in terms of cosine. Uh, we know that we need to find an amplitude. We got to find a midline. Should be extra parentheses in there. Uh, we've got to find the period which affects the B value, and then we got to find the phase shift. Okay, uh, to find the amplitude, let's find that first. So the amplitude is going to be the highest point minus the lowest point. So the max minus the min divided by 2. Okay, the maximum is 27. So we got 27. The minimum is 15, minus 15, divide by 2, which is going to be 6. 6 is our A value. Next up, we're going to find our midline. In other words, our D value. Our midline is going to be the max plus the min. So the maximum plus the minimum, divide by 2. 27 plus 15 divided by 2 is going to be 21, and that's our D value. Next, we're going to find our period. The period is how long it takes for one full cycle. This says after 6 seconds, the accordion is back to 15 centimeters long. That means it goes from 15 up to 27 and back to 15. Given that this is a cosine function, that's one full period, one full cycle. In this case, the period is equal to 6 seconds. We have an equation for period that says 2 pi over our B value is equal to the period. In other words, 2 pi over B is equal to 6 seconds. In solving this, I'm going to multiply both sides by B, and I get 2 pi is equal to 6B. Solving for B, I get 2 pi over 6. Lastly, I've got to find my phase shift. And for a positive cosine function that looks like this, phase shift is whatever the x-coordinate of the max. Okay. If I look in my problem, I see that three seconds later, the accordion is at its maximum. So the x-coordinate of the maximum would be 3. That means that my phase shift, my c-value, is going to be 3. In building this equation, we get amplitude of 6. That's my a. Cosine. B value of 2 pi over 6, x minus my C value, 3, and then plus my D value of 21. To solve some equations, the first thing we have to be aware of is that we're looking between 0 and 2 pi, so we're in radians. The next thing is we know we have to get each trig function by itself. So for the first part, I'm trying to get cosine by itself. To do that, I'm going to add 4 to both sides. Negative 7 halves plus 4 is positive a half. I'm looking for any angles for where cosine is a half. This is going to be based on a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. 
And in this case, we know that this should be 1 and a half and root 3 over 2. We know that cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So we're looking at a 60 degree, or pi over 3, family of angles. The second thing we need to think about are where these angles can occur. So we've got pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3, and 5 pi over 3. For cosine to be positive a half, we're looking only at the positive x values. Therefore, I get two answers, pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. For the second problem, I've got 3 fifths cosine x is equal to negative 2 square roots of 3 over 5. The first thing that I might do is to get rid of the 5 on both sides by multiplying this whole thing by 5. 3 fifths times 5 is 3 cosine x. Negative 2 root 3 over 5 is going to be multiplied by 5 and gets me negative 2 root 3 Now I've got to divide both sides by 3. Cosine of x is equal to negative this 2 square roots 3 over 3, which is not a unit circle cosine value. The only way for me to do this with what we know is with a calculator. I think this was supposed to be cosecant, not cosine. So we're going to take a look at this. We're looking for where cosine is negative. That's going to be these two angles over here. And I'm going to take the arc cosine, so cosine inverse, of negative 2 root 3 over 3. which is undefined. Uh, and that's because 2 square roots of 3 divide by 3 is negative 1.1. 1 .1. Uh, cosine only has values that it spits out between negative 1 and positive 1. Since we get something that doesn't work here, there are no solution angles that work because negative 1.1 doesn't fit inside of our possible cosine outputs. Finally, in this section, we're looking at 2 cosine x, uh, 2 sine x cosine x plus sine x is equal to 0. I'm going to do some factoring. I see that there are sine x pieces in each of this. Factor out a sine x, and I get 2 cosine x plus 1 is equal to 0. That means that sine x is equal to 0, and that 2 cosine x plus 1 is equal to 0. Sine x equals to 0 happens at x equals 0, and x equals 2 pi, uh, but that's outside of our interval. And solving my second equation gives me cosine x is negative 1 half. Those are going to be our pi over 3 angles, and we're looking at the ones in the left side of our graph. Ooh, I just kept in highlighter, didn't mean to. So that would be 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3.
Those are the two angles that have x coordinates of negative a half. Next up, we got some identities. Uh, first, we've got tangent x plus cotangent of x is equal to secant cosecant. I'm going to start with my left side and rewrite this as sine x over cosine x plus cosine x over sine x and keep the right side the same. So secant x, cosecant x. Um, I'd like to combine these, so I'm going to use some common denominators. Multiply the first part by sine x over sine x and the second part by cosine x over cosine x. On top that gives me sine squared x plus cosine squared x. And on the bottom that gives me sine x cosine x. And I'm going to rewrite that right side. You might notice that sine squared x plus cosine squared x is equal to 1. And that 1 over sine x is the same as cosecant x. 1 over cosine x is the same thing as secant x. i got to rewrite these, the guys, as I go down. And in this step, we have the same thing on both sides. Next up, we've got 1 plus tangent squared x is equal to 1 over cosine squared x minus sine squared x. Okay, uh, I'm not really sure where to begin. Um, I like converting things to sine and cosine first, so I might start with something like that. So we've got 1 plus tangent squared x. Uh, I could write this as 1 plus sine squared x over cosine squared x. And my denominator as 1 minus sine squared x over cosine squared x. I'm going to do that different color. Uh, and hopefully that turns into 1 over cosine squared x minus sine squared x. Let's do some common denominators in the top and the bottom. Uh, 1 I could write as cosine squared x over cosine squared x. Uh, I'm going to try that in both pieces. So for the top part, I end up with cosine squared x plus sine squared x over cosine squared x. And on the bottom, I end up with cosine squared x minus sine squared x over cosine squared x. Okay. I'm just going to bring down this piece again. So cosine squared x minus sine squared x. Uh, first thing we might observe is that that's equal to 1. So we get 1 over cosine squared x. I'm not comfortable with uh, fractions like this over fractions like this, so I'm going to rewrite this as a sideways division. We get cosine squared x minus sine squared x over cosine squared x. In other words, 1 over cosine squared x multiplied by cosine squared x over cosine squared x minus sine squared x. My cosine squareds cancel out. And in the last step, I've got 1 over cosine squared x minus sine squared x is equal to 1 over cosine squared x minus sine squared x.